Today, I want to introduce to you Gary Graff, an esteemed journalist and author, someone I've known for the past couple decades. His focus has always been on music, writing articles for publications such as the Detroit Free Press, the New York Times, Billboard Magazine, Guitar World, and so many others. As a prolific writer, though, Gary has covered numerous bands and musical artists over the years. His latest book, Alice Cooper at 75, can be found at all retailers, including Amazon. I found our conversation to be quite interesting, especially about a man who has been ensconced in theater and shock rock. But does Alice's stage persona match our perception of the man himself is a question. Why don't you make up your own mind and listen to this? The chicken story yeah. uh, that took place at a festival in Toronto in 1969. The shtick in their show was they used to, you know, break feather pillows mm -hmm. and you know you'd have a stage right, full, of full of feather pillows so at this concert in toronto mm -hmm. the rock and roll revival that where alice played between the doors and john lennon so during the concert this chicken wanders on stage seemingly out of nowhere alice picks the chicken up he grew up in the midwest he doesn't know they don't fly <laughs> So Alice throws it into the audience where the front row tore this chicken to bits. Oh, and, we're, and we're throwing pieces of the chicken back to the stage and Alice was throwing it back. Wire Services was there, covered it. Tremendous notoriety, of course. Of course, course yeah. Horrifying. Oh, uh, yeah. So many people. Alice uh, was recording for Frank Zappa's record company at the time. Zappa saw the story the next day, mm -hmm. calls Alice, he said, did you really kill a chicken on stage? He said, no, I just, he said, well, don't tell anybody. <laughs> this is great, we're getting tons of press. Turned out Alice's manager was the one who put the chicken on stage, not with any designs of getting the poor chicken killed, but just to see what just would happen. Just to see what would happen. So, um, so that, was their, wow. that was their first great brush of international notoriety. In your casual conversations, knowing him the way that you did, uh, what you saw on stage and what he is on a persona basis in a casual conversation, I would assume that he's a very intelligent man. Oh, extremely. And that he, he was grounded in some way. Really intelligent. Yeah. I mean, you know, or you watch him on Hollywood Squares when he was a guest during those He was days. on that? Oh, yeah. Know. I met him, I was a fan as a teenager, but met him in 1986 when they began his comeback. Mm -hmm. And they decided to open the whole thing back on, back home, back on Terra Firmer. And he did a week's worth of shows in smaller Michigan cities. Right. And then finished with an arena show at two arena, wound up being two arena shows at Joe Louis Arena, one of which was broadcast as a VH1 Halloween special. Mm -hmm. You, well, let's go back to 1971, 72. Public enemy number one. Parents hated him. Adults hated him. Just, but the Shri the um, Friars Club, mm -hmm. Milton Berle, yeah. Jack Benny, Bob right. Hope. Those guys loved Alice Cooper no back then because they saw in Alice Cooper the then contemporary embodiment of what they did and how they came out. Oh. Alice used to tell me that George Burns would sit there and talk to him and say, yeah, Gracie and I used to do this show with a guy who had a guillotine back in 23. And he, those guys, those guys understood the vaudeville yeah. of what, the, what Alice Cooper was. 